now that we've looked at some of the ways of backing up and uh, preventing problems with Windows 7, let's have a look at some of the automated uh, ways that we can uh, apply quick fixes. Now the first of these is the application compatibility assistant. Now I talked about this briefly in part one. Now Windows 7 is the most compatible uh, version of Windows uh, ever when it comes to uh, older software. But sometimes software still won't work and as I've said you can right click on a program in the start menu and change its compatibility settings from the properties uh, inspector for that program. But sometimes uh, when you install a program you'll see this um, dialog window that will appear here where Windows has detected that the program might not have installed properly. Now it's entirely possible that the program did install properly and Windows has um, recognized something that a problem that isn't there and that you'll never have any problems with it. But it's worth making note of what programs you receive this notice for so that if you do experience problems in the future um, it's useful information that can help you diagnose problems. But what this will uh, do is it'll give you an opportunity for Windows to automatically uh, apply uh, compatibility settings to the program and it will reinstall it. And this can be a very useful way of being able to um, prevent problems. Then there are the automatic troubleshooters. Now these are accessed from the Action Center, uh, which is the uh, little white flag down near the clock on the bottom right of the Windows 7 taskbar. Now you'll see uh, a link in the Action Center to troubleshooting and there are a whole range of automatic troubleshooters for just about everything in Windows. But all these automatic troubleshooters will do is reset Windows components to their default state, which um, is useful in some instances but not in others. But there are a great many there. But one of the best things about the automatic troubleshooters is that you can add your own. If you can program in XML, then uh, you can write your own automatic troubleshooters uh, to add to this for your own bespoke software or hardware. And in order to be able to do this, uh, you need to get the Windows 7 software development kit, and you'll see in the bin forward slash TSP designer folder there is a Windows troubleshooting pack designer and you can use this to build your XML troubleshooters for Windows 7. Then there's startup repair. Now by default startup repair is set to run automatically from your hard disk um, if Windows fails to boot three times. The files are there on the hard disk but sometimes they may become corrupt themselves and they won't be able to uh, start. But let's now have a look with this video at Startup Repair in a little bit more detail. Windows 7 contains some really useful tools for detecting and automatically repairing problems with Windows 7 Startup. By default, these uh, utilities will automatically kick in if Windows fails to boot three times and they'll try and find a repair but there are other options available to you and there are several ways to get to them. The easiest way is to press the F8 key on your keyboard uh, before the Windows logo appears but after the BIOS boot screen and you'll see this menu here. From here you want to select repair your computer. Once in the recovery options you'll be prompted with a menu and there are several options to choose from here. Let's go through each one in turn and look at them. Startup Repair runs an automatic troubleshooter that can fix common problems that prevent Windows 7 from starting. System Restore allows you to roll back critical operating system files to an earlier point, perhaps before you've installed a new piece of software, a hardware driver or a Windows update that are causing Windows 7 to malfunction. System Image Recovery allows you to restore the entire operating system from a backup image 
you need to create one of these yourself and I'll talk about how to do this in a minute. The Windows Memory Diagnostic can help detect physical hardware problems with your computer's memory. And the Command Prompt gives you access to a scripting environment where you can perform advanced recovery and diagnostic operations. In order to perform a system image recovery, you first need to create a backup copy of your Windows installation, which you can do from the control panel. In the System and Security section, you want to click the link Back Up Your Computer. In the blue panel on the left hand side, there's an option to create a system image. Now you'll need an external hard drive, another internal hard drive, or a series of DVDs to save this image onto and you might want to install your software and configure Windows 7 how you want it before you create the image. Just below that is an option to create a system repair disk. You can boot from this CD or DVD and access the recovery console and the system repair options that we looked at a moment ago. While you can choose repair your computer from the advanced boot options in Windows 7 and also use a startup repair disk to get straight to the startup repair options, you can also get to them through the Windows 7 installation DVD. When you boot from this, you'll be first asked what language you want to install in. Just simply click through this and at the next screen, instead of pressing the install now button, click repair your computer. This will take you to the automated repair options and then the repair menu that we saw earlier. Now one thing I want to talk about here is the system repair disk. I want to talk about this a little bit more. An important thing to note about the system repair disk is that you have to have 32-bit and 64-bit system repair disks if you are going to be uh, repairing um, both uh, types of Windows 7 operating system. Now a 32-bit system repair disk will be created, can only be created, in a 32-bit copy of Windows 7. In exactly the same way as a 64-bit system repair disk can only be created in a 64-bit copy of Windows 7. So if you're not actually running a 32-bit system yourself for instance but you need to repair a 32-bit system you'll need to create that disk another way it's one of the one of the one of the the, the more annoying foibles with the uh, startup repair uh, system in Windows 7 but it's uh, an important consideration and it's well worth having uh, those two disks because they can make, make access to startup repair much simpler well that's it for part two and in the next part we're going to have a look at more advanced troubleshooting.